Welcome back Guardians. Today we're going to talk about Cade 6, specifically how he's back in the final shape. There are a couple of hints in Season of the Wish, but new trailers and the showcase have given us more information on the interior of the Traveler and what's going on there, which might help us understand the circumstances of Cade's return. But before starting, this video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon's been a sponsor of this channel for years now. And if you haven't got yourself a pair, now is a great time because they have upgraded their best-selling everyday earbuds. The new model has improved active noise cancellation, allowing you to block out the background noise while you listen to a podcast or watch a video, but you can always switch to awareness mode if you need to listen to what's happening around you. My favorite new feature is the multi-point connectivity, because before my wife would steal my earbuds and they would automatically pair with her phone as soon as I took them out of the case, but now we can have both our phones paired, no need to disconnect and reconnect. Like usual, the earbuds are extremely comfy even for extended periods of time. I use them every day around the house and they are super convenient for multitasking with the tap functions, tapping the Raycon symbol to pause or play media, adjust the volume or even answer or end calls. Now is the best time to check out Raycon with their 30 day happiness guarantee, their upgraded everyday earbuds. And if you click the link in the description and go to buyraycon.com slash Marlin, you can get 20% off your next Raycon purchase plus free shipping. To understand Cade's return, we need to understand his death. There's a whole series of events leading up to his death, but they're not really relevant for today's video. What is important is that Cade was killed by the Awoken Prince, Aldrin, who later became a guardian you know as Crow. Unfortunately, despite having no memories, Crow still looked like Aldrin and was attacked on site by many guardians who still saw him as the Awoken Prince. Have a listen to the lore entry Sparky and the Scrivener. It reads... From the beginning, this little ghost had been the only thing keeping him going. It seemed every guardian he met had little interest in him except to hold him accountable for the unknown sins of his past. But this almost unbearably earnest ghost had amended him again and again. The next morning, a passerby saw Glint's Lightbearer without his helmet. The Titan beat him mercilessly with her flaming hammer, snapping his collarbone and crushing his pelvis. He died hours later of internal hemorrhage. Glint brought him back and the pair traveled in silence for a long while. You might be wondering why we're focusing on Crow instead of Cade, but bear with me as I suspect Crow is pretty central to what's going on with Cade's return. Even after becoming an operative for the Vanguard, the past would continue to cause issues for Crow and he feared he would never escape the shadow of his former self. Things only got worse in Season of the Lost when Crow's memories of Aldrin were restored by Savathun and he finally learned the truth. Needless to say, he didn't take it well. Have a listen. I want the truth. I was kind to you because I wanted to be. Because the truth hurts. You know this better than anyone. Shrinking away from the rumors of the man you used to be. I'm not him. How can you say that when you don't even know who he is? If the truth is what you really want, then lay your hand on me. Crow, don't. Please. See? Even your ghost thinks you're better off in the dark. I did. I did. Crow, don't. Don't come any closer. What did you show him? Everything. No, wait! You hurt him. Someone had to. Better for it to have come from a friend. This all came to a climax in Season of the Haunted, where Crow had to physically confront his past in the form of a darkness-made nightmare of Aldrin Sof. With some help from Eris and the Guardian, Crow reconciled with Aldrin and vowed to try to make amends for the events of Forsaken. Have a listen to his dialogue from the Bound in Sorrow questline. Second chances. Huh. Turns out I've been using mine wrong. I thought being a guardian was my destiny. That wielding the light for good was the most I had to offer. But it's clear now. 
this is what the traveler chose me for. I was reforged in the light for a purpose, to remake something dead and gone into something beautiful, to learn how to forge something new from what we were. Everything Aldrin did to the reef, the scorn, Fickrel, I have a responsibility. No, a calling to make them whole. And I can't replace Cade, but I can cover his old patrols, maybe organize the hunters a bit, if they'll let me clean up some of my mess. I don't know if I can fix everything Aldrin left broken, but I can try. If you've been playing Destiny since Forsaken, then this may all feel like common knowledge, but the point is to show you just how integral Cade's death is to Crow's character. Cade is always there in the back of his mind, and in a place like the Pale Heart of the Traveler, this could be quite significant. In the most recent Final Shape trailer, Cade mentions that everything in the Pale Heart is a memory. The ground beneath my feet is a memory. So is the grass and the sky. The warmth of the sun on my face. And in the recent showcase, Bungie talked about how the destination will be shaped by both the Witness and our Guardian's experiences. This explains why places like the Destiny 1 Tower are present there. Have a listen. The Witness entered well ahead of any Guardians, and so it's had time to kind of shape what's there. When our Guardian enters, the rest of the Pale Heart starts getting shaped also around what we've experienced. At the end of Season of the Wishes' seasonal story, Cray entered the Pale Heart alone in order to make a path for the rest of us, so it seems likely that he too is shaping the interior of the Traveler. If Kate is always on his mind, could Cray have accidentally brought the Hunter Vanguard back through his memories? Well, we don't know for sure, but it's certainly a possibility. Based on what we know of the Pale Heart, it seems very likely that Cade is a memory. The question is how or why did he manifest? Crow's guilt, or perhaps something more sinister. In one of the lore entries from this season, Crow talks with Mara about the events of Forsaken and what he would change if he could. At the top of the list, he wishes that he could have spoken to Cade and expressed his regret for killing him. Have a listen to the lore entry, Unforeseen Consequences. It reads, Remorse and recriminations, Mara says absently. She turns her eyes toward him. If you could go back, alter the course of your history, what would you change? He can't help but laugh. Where to begin? Crow muses with a smirk. It fades soon enough. Cade, he whispers. Mara raises an eyebrow. Oh? Before then, I could have taken a different road, but once I pulled that trigger, he shakes his head. Everything else, I can set right, but not that. I just wish I could tell him I shouldn't have done it. I see, Mara murmurs. Her eyes shine in the starlight. Crow sighs and rolls his shoulders back. I should get going. Vanguard's waiting on my report. We all have our obligations, I suppose. Don't I know it? Crow nods as he heads down the hall. He pauses at the portal to the Dreaming City and glances back at Mara. Ringed by the distant nebulae, she shimmers like a mirage on desert sands, and then Crow is gone. See you soon. Mara's voice echoes across the empty chamber as the illusion fades. Oh, brother mine. So yeah, it turns out Crow wasn't speaking to Mara at all, he was actually speaking to Riven. This isn't the first time she's pulled this trick either. She used an illusion of Mara to manipulate Aldrin during the events of Forsaken. So Crow unknowingly made a wish to be able to speak to Cade, and as an Ahamkara, Riven was more than capable of granting it. The Pale Heart is shaping itself based on memories seems like a perfect place for the two to have a reunion. But of course, if Cade's return is thanks to a wish, that means, in classic Ahamkara fashion, there may well be a catch. It's possible Riven was being benevolent like Taranis, but giving her track record, I wouldn't count on it. The entry is even ominously called Unforeseen Consequences. I guess we'll have to find out in the final shape. And that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word Cade6. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.